So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, your soul is your greatest gift and Islam is the greatest gift of guidance that keeps it protected insha'Allah ta'ala. <clears throat> dhikr, dhikr, when you're standing, when you're sitting, when you're lying, lying down, before you go to sleep, after you wake up, when you eat, when you go, when you come, constantly on your tongue, insha'Allah, is what nourishes your soul and your happiness begins to rise. Now here is a beautiful gift hidden within this gift. This is the gem of the gift of Islam. You ready to hear it? The gem of the gift of Islam. You cannot enjoy the gift which Allah gave you until you are connected with the one who gave you that gift. Isn't that correct? When your parents give you a gift or you give your children a gift, what does that create? Relationship, good. See, I heard it from the child. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tahadu, tahabu. Give gifts to each other, increase your love for one another. The reason Allah gave us the gift is because He loves you. And Allah wants you to know that He's always close to you. That's the clux of the meaning of this Islam. Why did Allah give us Islam? Because He wants you to know that He is close to you. Listen to what Allah said. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Which means... And when my slaves ask you about me, O Muhammad وسلم, and when my slaves ask you about me, I am close. I am close. I respond to every single request of the person who calls upon me. If they continue to call upon me. So let them respond to me. Let them come closer to me with my guidance, Islam. Let them respond to my call. And Allah has called us through the Quran and His Messenger. He calls us through His Islam. Let them respond to Islam. Let them respond to my gift. Let them accept my gift. All these meanings. Let them accept my gift. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And let them put their absolute faith and trust secured in their heart towards me. Iman comes from amn. Amn means security. And Allah called iman from the word security, which means you cannot be a mu'min unless you are secure in your heart that Allah truly is your Lord and you trust Him. That's what iman means. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Let them accept my gift of Islam. Let them accept the call. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And let them secure their faith in me in their heart. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ In the hope that they will reach what they yearn for. يَرْشُدُونَ means that Allah will take care of all your problems and worries and requests that you want. الرُشْد means to reach your goal that is good. الرُشْد means to reach guidance. الرُشْد means so that they may be guided to the place which brings them the happiness and success in this world and the next. Let's go back on it. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي وَإِذَا means in English and if. But إِذَا is different to if. If means in 
or either. In sa'alaka or idha sa'alaka. The difference between in sa'alaka and idha sa'alaka, they both in English means if, is this. In sa'alani means only if they ask about me. Idha is more open. Whenever they ask me. Constantly ask me. So Allah is telling us, ask about me all the time. Not just when you're in need. Not just when there is a problem. I want you to ask about me because I want you to have a relationship with me. I want you to know that I'm close to you. Always ask about me. Always. And the best way to make dua, the best times to make dua, is when you don't really have a need. You just want to talk to Allah. We've forgotten that dua, closeness to Allah, is just talking to Allah. If you love someone, don't you love to talk to them? Huh? If you love their company, don't you just talk to them, pick up the phone, you talk to them. Isn't that correct? A wife always complains, my husband never talks to me. It means she loves you, ya akhi. And when she wants you to talk to you, and when she talks too much to you, it's because you love each other. Allah wants you to talk to Him. So that's why I use the word إِذَا, which means always. Ask you about me. I want them to ask you about me. This is what I love them to do. I want them to ask you about me. Then Allah says something amazing. He does not say, then tell them that I am close. Then tell them. He doesn't say that. Naturally, if I say to someone, look, if someone asks you about me, then tell him that I love him. Isn't that, isn't that the proper sentence? But Allah doesn't say that. He didn't say, if they ask you about me, then tell them that I'm close. He said, if they ask you about me, I'm going to take the answer myself. My slave, I'm close. I've always been close. Directly, I'm going to talk to you. You know, like a king. If a king says to his uh, vizier, my people are asking about me. Can you go out onto the balcony and tell them that I love them? That's one way. And the people go, yeah. But when the king says, the people are asking about me, move out of my way. He comes out himself to the balcony and says, I love you all. Isn't there a big difference? Big difference. The intimacy is quite amazing, isn't it? Allah is saying, if they ask you about me, Ya Rasulullah, move out of the way. I will talk to them directly because this is what I love to say. I want to tell them. My slaves, I'm close. And I've always been close. And I always will be close. When you asked about me and didn't ask about me, I was always close. Whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim. There's a bit of a controversy over here. Some ulama said it's only the believers. Possibly. It has a point. But I say, Wallahu alam, according to some mufassirun, even for the non-Muslims. Because how else does a non-Muslim repent? If Allah was not close, He wouldn't accept their repentance. Isn't that correct? Allah is always ready for any repentance. And when a non-Muslim becomes a Muslim, Allah is always there to hear him. As soon as they say the shahada, He's there. When you make sin and you repent, He's there. There, always, always. Inni qareeb. I'm close. Ujibu da'wat ad-da'i idha da'an. Now, here is another irregular sentence. When you say to someone, listen, if you ask me, I'll tell you. If you ask me, I'll give it to you. Isn't that what we say? If you say sorry, I'll forgive you. Isn't that correct? Isn't that correct? If you respect me, I'll respect you. Isn't that the proper sentence? There's some people that say, respect only those who respect you. I won't respect anyone until they respect me. So respect me and I'll respect you. That's the proper sentence, right? But Allah uses it in the other way around. He says, I respond to the caller. He gave the answer already. So he, he gave the answer before the question. He didn't say, if they are, when they call upon me, I will respond. That's the proper sentence. Allah said, no, I always respond. So long as they continue to ask about me. Because Allah's response is definite. It's definite. But your calling upon Him is not definite. It's unstable. You may ask, you may not. Allah is telling you, my response is always there. I will. The problem is you. You've got to do your part. 
And again, Allah uses إِذَا دَعَانِ It doesn't say إِن دَعَانِ If they call. إِذَا means I want my slave to always call upon me. Always. Didn't Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, مَنْ لَمْ يَسْأَلِ اللَّهَ يَغْضَبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Whoever does not ask Allah, Allah will become angry with them. If you don't ask Allah, Allah becomes angry with you. Ajeeb. What kind of love is this? If you, if someone keeps asking you for things, what are you going to do to them in the end? Huh? Imagine everyone, someone coming up to your door. Uh, we've run out of sugar. Have you got any sugar? Give them sugar. Two hours later, knock. Listen, I want to water my garden. I've lost my hose. It's not working. Can I use your hose? You give him the hose. Comes back, look. I forgot to fill up my car petrol. Do you have a tank that I can borrow fill up petrol? Yeah, you have a tank. Then he comes up to you and goes, Hey, listen, I'm too tired to go to get the petrol in the tank. Can I use this hose to take some petrol out of your own car and put it in mine? You say, yes. <laughs> Come up to me and say, Listen, man, I can't be stuffed to go to the shops to buy some tomatoes. Your wife got any more tomatoes in there? Just give me a couple. In the end, what are you going to do to him? You're going to grab the tomato and throw it in his face. You're going to get the hose and whip him with it. <laughs> Every time you're coming asking for things, sure, am I, am I your, have, you have you inherited me or something? Isn't that correct? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the opposite. He says, I'll become angry with you if you don't consistently ask me. Allahu Akbar. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah subhanaka ya ilahi ma ahlamaka wa ma arhamak. How merciful is Allah and how patient He is with us. He says, if you stop asking me, I will become angry with you. Who says that statement except someone who loves you immensely, beyond any measure? You ask and you ask and you ask. And Allah says, I will become angry if you stop asking. In fact, I will become angry with you if you do not insist and persist in your dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ وَأَلِحُوا فِي الدُّعَى اُدْعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَلِحُوا فِي الدُّعَى Make dua to Allah and be consistent and persistent. This, my dear brothers and sisters, the point of this is, Allah who gave us the gift of Islam, He only gave it to you because He loves you. And Allah already dances you. I am close. I am close. The entire Quran is talking about intimacy between you and Allah. Now here is the question. How could one who loves you this much give you a gift? that will not bring you happiness in this world and the next. Say alhamdulillah, alladhi hadana lihada, wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. Allah said, say praise and gratitude to Allah who has guided us to this. And we'd have never been guided if Allah did not guide us to it. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi.